Well, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me okay? okay. Yes. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm Lisa Minor, principal of Kent Pre-K to 8 school, and it's a beautiful school. And as John said, we're now going to show you how the school is being used. Uh, but before we start, I have a quick question. How many of you all are in the process of getting ready to move into a new facility or in the planning of a new building? Is there anyone here? Teachers, educators, great. Because we know how you feel. You're excited. You can't wait. You're watching it, driving by every day, watching the building come up. Because that's the experience we had. Um, what we decided to do when we had the opportunity to know we're going to experience a brand new building, we wanted to make it a wonderful experience for our children first. And we decided to uh, imagine and create uh, atmosphere, our goal was to create an atmosphere where children would want to run into the building and be rewarded and fulfilled every day. So we decided to study engagement and we wanted to design a, a facility that children would be totally engaged in the educational process every day and excited about being there. Uh, part of that was to really examine our beliefs. What are your beliefs about education? And we met as groups, we did a lot of team activities, and we came up with these three. These are our core beliefs. So when you see how we're using the facility, it all stems from these beliefs. It goes back to that. Um, our first belief is every student can learn and every student will learn if presented with the right opportunities to do so. And it is our, our obligation to provide those opportunities. So we took ownership of that. We also believed, you know, what is the school for? The core business of schools should be designing engaging work for students and leading students to success in that work. We wanted their experience every day to be an engaging experience in all of the lessons that are designed. Um, I have my teachers here with me, and I have a whole staff of teacher leaders. We heard from Chris and Zach how you work as a partnership. You lead the staff and let them go to explore and examine new ways. And part of that is the belief of teachers are leaders, guides to instruction, and designers of work for students, work that calls upon the students to learn important content and develop critical intellectual habits and skills. So those are our core beliefs that we'll refer back to. And now we're anxious to share all the exciting things that happen in our building. Uh, new learning spaces to improve instruction. Our staff, just to tell you a little bit about Kemp. Kemp is a traditional school. We are a community school. We, I actually have in my office a class picture from 1925, so it goes way back. We've got about 50% of the staff are like veteran teachers, 20 plus more, and then we have 50% that are new. But what we had to come into agreement is we wanted new learning spaces that will improve instruction. That's what our architects provided for us. We have new learning spaces that incre in increase the differentiated instruction that we provide, and that ultimately leads to more student engagement. Here's a picture of girls working together in group projects, which we do a lot of that. In the corner there, we, do, we don't have carpeting, but we brought our own carpets in <laughs> to make it more homey. And you see kids on the floor reading in the corner there. Um, this is our primary wing, but we've got some upper grade students working on some projects. We spread throughout the building. Again, we call them extended learning areas, or for short, we call them pods. You see Mr. Foltz working with a group of kids and one of our paraprofessionals working with a group of kids. And it's, it's very common if you come, we have a lot of visitors to the building, and there are always children out in our extended learning areas. We have small group tutoring. Um, we use the Pro Positive School Climate Program, which is an offset of positive behavior support. Uh, we believe in providing extra support to students who may need um, extra time and attention from adults, and that's our check-in, check-out system. Uh, this is another picture of our primary wing, and what we're looking at are, we have a buddy system where our older children, we're a pre-K to 8 school, so we have 3-year-olds all the way up to 14-year-olds, but once a month our students, our 8th graders, read with our primary students and, and our kindergarten students in a learning area as buddies, and they've got little blankets and books there. 
I'm going to let Mr. Foltz, who's a third grade teacher, come on up, and he's going to share more ways that we're using our extended learning areas. Yeah, you just hit that button here. Make sure I know how to work it before we start. Um, another thing that we did with our extended learning area was uh, an OAA boot camp. Um, this was an initiative that the district um, pulled uh, Ms. Miter and myself in and all the other principals in our district and um, said that they wanted, this was on Friday, and they wanted on Monday implemented a um, small group a boot camp <laughs> situation. Um, mm -hmm. So luckily, because we did have the situation where we have these huge open areas with tables, um, it was easy for us. Um, in our old building, in our what we called the holding cell, um, there were just narrow hallways where it wouldn't have worked out. So what we did was um, we divided the, st uh, the students um, based on ability and need um, into small groups, and the students got one-on-one. -on -one. You can see that um, we have our laptops out. Um, we have um, internet access throughout the building, so we can take the laptops into the pod. Um, some students were working on computers. There, are other, uh, there were others that were working with um, a teacher or um, a para focusing on those skills, and the extra space is what made that possible. Um, this is another one. You can see that we were able to keep um, the group smaller so that the kids were getting um, focused instruction. And the nice thing is, is that the tables, um, they, they're small, but we can also, sometimes we have three or four in the pod that we can make them longer. Um, we can sort of make um, unique arrangements to try to help with that. Um, and this right here um, at the top picture is actually the exit to the buses. So we are able to use every space in the building is actually able to be used. We use our teacher workrooms, um, the hallways, the, the big areas, the leading out areas that you saw in the other picture. Um, we also, this is a great thing because we can get increased community involvement. Um, Cedarville High School students were doing, um, instead of having a spirit week this year, they were doing a spirit of um, service week. So they came out, they brought out 54 high school students um, and each one of them brought a book and a blanket to um, the third grade students and they were able to um, read the book with them, they did a craft with them, they gave them the book, and we were able to easily, we spread out in the 3-5 pod and then also in the pre-K-2 pod, the students were able to have their own space uh, and visit with that, that person. And there has actually been since this, and this was back in at Christmas time, um, hence the Christmas paper, they, were a, they are in contact with them, the, the high school students still, there's like a pen pal program going on. Um, we have also had um, DCDC, which is Dayton, uh, Dayton Contemporary Dance Company, has come in to work with, and we, ha we can spread the tables out, and all of the students can then, the entire class is able to go through the dance. They, they integrate curriculum with uh, dancing. The Dayton Philharmonic comes out too, and with the stage in the pre-K too, we're able to use that um, for them to set up on, and then that way we don't uh, interrupt the gym classes. Gym doesn't have to be canceled. The cafeteria doesn't have to be interrupted. There are places that we can have that in the building. Um, and then finally, we have community volunteers. Uh, we're partners with two or three uh, churches who come in and work with us, and they, the church members work one-on-one -on -one or in small group with students. And the nice thing is, is that when we were in the old building with just the general hallway, the kids were easily distracted because if a class walked down the hallway, they were really close to the, the tables and the desks. With this, there's so much space that they can easily spread out. We have the, uh, the chairs, the comfy chairs here, which for some people, especially with a few of our elderly um, volunteers, they're not able to sit in those hard chairs for you know an hour or whatever. So it's nice that we have that. Um, it's nice when I go out, I don't like to sit on the hard chair either. So um, I have that area too. We can take whole classes out there and do read alouds on the carpet. Um, it's just made it nice that there's a place that 
volunteers can go where they feel like they're not being intrusive and that they're not in someone else's way or uh, stopping something from going on. They feel welcome because there's a space for them. There are, even if there's a group working out there, they can find another, you know, there's other places that they can go. And it just increased the opportunities that we were able to give uh, the students in our building.